Hello, and thank you for taking the time to learn about the Ages and Stages Questionnaire, Social Emotional 2nd Edition, also referred to as the ASQ SE2. The ASQ SE2 is one of the validated, caregiver completed developmental screening tools recommended in the Louisiana Developmental Screening Guidelines, which you'll hear more about in a minute. First, I wanted to let you know a bit about Children's Special Health Services, the group behind this webinar. We are a program of the Bureau of Family Health, which is located in the Office of Public Health, an agency of the State Health Department. The Bureau of Family Health is made up of the Maternal and Child Health, Reproductive Health, Children and Youth with Special Health Care Needs, and Maternal, Infant, and Early Childhood Home Visiting Programs, along with a handful of other related programs. We work to advance the health and well-being of women, children, particularly children with special needs, adolescents, and families in Louisiana. The Louisiana Developmental Screening Guidelines were developed by the Young Child Wellness Collaborative, an interdisciplinary work group of early childhood experts from various agencies across the state. These guidelines expand screening recommendations beyond the domains included in the Bright Futures Guidelines released by the American Academy of Pediatrics, which include general developmental milestones, autism, and parent or caregiver well-being. The Louisiana Developmental Screening Guidelines also include social-emotional development and environmental risk. These voluntary guidelines promote national best practices and support providers with resources to build comprehensive screening services at the practice level. In line with best practices, each of the screening tools recommended in our guidelines are completed by parents or caregivers, rather than providers. This shift in practice guidelines recognizes the unique expertise that caregivers have on their child's behavior in multiple settings, and also relieves providers from the time and energy it takes to administer and score an instrument based on interaction and observation. The Ages and Stages Questionnaire, Social Emotional, is one of the screening instruments recommended by the Young Child Wellness Collaborative for Social Emotional Development. Here you can see the Louisiana Developmental Screening Guidelines periodicity schedule, an easy-to-use table showing which screenings to conduct at each well-child visit. While the AAP recommends psychosocial behavioral surveillance at every well-child visit, they do not have a specified periodicity schedule for administering social emotional developmental screeners or screeners for social determinants of health. In the absence of recommended periodicity, the Louisiana Developmental Screening Guidelines recommend screening every child for social-emotional development at 18, 30, 36, 48, and 60 months, as well as any time there is caregiver or provider concern. From here, we'll first discuss the need for implementing a developmental screening initiative in Louisiana, then distinguish between monitoring, surveillance, and standardized screening. We'll then present the rationale for implementing universal screening for social-emotional development, cover the basics of the ASQ SE2, review tools and processes for successfully implementing a developmental screening system, and finish up with a review of useful referrals and resources for families when a positive screen is identified. As mentioned previously, guidelines around developmental screening have changed in the past couple of years, and it's important that primary care providers across the state are working from the most updated recommendations. Recent data suggests that 37% of children ages birth to five in Louisiana are at moderate to high risk for delays in school readiness, and 42% of Louisiana parents report having concerns about their child's development. This suggests that there is a large portion of children in Louisiana that would benefit from early identification and intervention. However, less than 17% of parents in Louisiana with children ages 10 months to five years who visited a pediatric primary care doctor in the last year reported having completed a developmental screening questionnaire at that visit. Our goal with the developmental screening initiative is to increase screening rates in primary care for young children in Louisiana so that they can receive supports and services earlier to maximize their health, education, and daily functioning. Early identification consists of three related but distinct components developmental monitoring, surveillance, and screening. Each is a method of tracking developmental milestones. Developmental monitoring simply consists of parents or caregivers noticing and celebrating their child reaching developmental milestones, as well as noting when milestones aren't reached at the typical time. Since many parents often don't know every developmental milestone or when they should occur, using tools like the CDC's Learn the Signs, Act Early materials can be very helpful. I'll talk more about those tools in a bit. Developmental surveillance is essentially the same concept as developmental monitoring, but is typically conducted by healthcare or early care and education providers. To get a fuller picture, this often includes the provider eliciting parental concerns and taking a developmental history. Developmental screening involves a healthcare or early care and education provider administering a validated instrument for a caregiver to complete with standardized questions about their child's development. 
This is the component we'll focus on mostly today. Now that we've distinguished between developmental monitoring, surveillance, and screening, it's important to understand that each component of early identification complements the others, and that ideally we want all three to be happening for every child. Many primary care providers have effective procedures for developmental surveillance. For instance, building questions for parents about development into the normal flow of a well child visit. This is a great practice that can help normalize discussions around development for families and providers. However, a limitation of relying exclusively on surveillance is that while it does a good job of picking up children with significant impairments, it may miss those who have more subtle issues that might respond well to early intervention. Research demonstrates that children receiving standardized screening were referred to early intervention services 64% faster than children receiving surveillance alone. Similarly, we know that children whose parents engage in developmental monitoring and whose physicians administer developmental screening tools are more than twice as likely to receive early intervention services compared to children receiving only monitoring or only screening. All three components work best together to link children to needed resources. Social emotional development is another word used to describe mental health and early childhood. It refers to a child's developing capacity to experience, manage, and express the full range of positive and negative emotions, develop close, satisfying relationships with other children and adults, and actively explore their environment and learn. Disruptions in children's social-emotional development have long-lasting negative outcomes for children's mental and physical health, achievement in school and work, and in social relationships. Social, emotional, and behavioral problems are common in young children, but often go undetected. Parents may not know what normative social-emotional development looks like, or may be hesitant to bring up concerns at well-child visits. One critical issue for Louisiana families is that poverty is a significant predictor of emotional and behavioral issues in children, and can also serve as an impairment to early identification and accessing supports and services. Nearly a third of Louisiana children up to age 5 live in poverty, compared to less than a quarter of children nationwide, making this a particularly salient factor to the families we serve. Without early identification and intervention, social-emotional problems can lead to school failure, unemployment, and incarceration. However, by systematically administering social-emotional screening tools in primary care, these issues can be identified earlier and families can be referred to needed supports and services to help their child thrive. The Ages and Stages Questionnaire, Social-Emotional, was developed as a complement to the Ages and Stages Questionnaire, which is a general developmental screening tool. The questionnaire is designed to identify children from 1 to 72 months who may be at risk for social-emotional delays or disorders. The screen covers seven domains of social-emotional functioning. Self-regulation, compliance, communication, adaptive functioning, autonomy, affect, and interaction with people. This tool is available in English or Spanish and is written at a 4th to 5th grade reading level. A key feature of the ASQSE is that there are actually nine different versions to be used at specific age intervals. While this may sound like a lot to keep track of, remember that if you're following the Louisiana Developmental Screening Guidelines, you'll be administering only five of these questionnaires regularly, the 18, 30, 36, 48, and 60-month questionnaires. The others should be readily available in the event of a provider or a parent concern. Brooks Publishing also offers an ASQ SE2 age calculator online at the link shown here to assist providers with selecting the correct questionnaire for each child. Administering the ASQ SE2 is quite simple and can be broken down into three steps. First, have the parent or caregiver complete the questionnaire, providing reading or translation assistance as necessary. Second, score the questionnaire using the scoring key and transfer the total to the information summary page where you can compare it to the cutoff score to determine the risk level. Finally, share the results with the family, discussing resources and referrals as needed. We'll now go over each of these steps in more detail. Here we have a sample first page of the ASQ SE. Parents should complete this first page with information about themselves and their child, and then complete the 30 questions of the questionnaire on the subsequent pages. Before administering the questionnaire, office staff members should be sure that the correct age interval is being used. Check the age interval at the top of the front page. It's important for the validity of the screening results that caregivers understand the screener. Don't be afraid to offer reading or interpretation assistance if you think that it's needed. Most parents are able to complete the ASQ SE in 10 to 15 minutes. Scoring the ASQ SE is a little trickier than some of the other tools recommended in the Louisiana Developmental Screening Guidelines. Responses may be worth 0, 5, or 10 points depending on the small letter next to each response box. Responses marked with an X are worth 10 points, 
a V is worth 5 points, and a Z is worth 0 points. The order of the letters may change from question to question, as you can see in the highlighted orange boxes, where the first response is marked with an X, while the response in the same position on the subsequent question is marked with a Z. Remember to read carefully. In addition, if a caregiver marks an item as concerning, that adds an additional 5 points to that item. For instance, on item 5, the caregiver selected sometimes, which is marked with a V for 5 points. The parent also marked it as an item of concern, adding another 5 points for an item total of 10 points. As you score each item, add up the points in each page to create sum scores, and from there transfer the sum scores to the information summary page to calculate the total score, shown here in an orange box. Compare the total score to the cutoff points marked on the score interpretation line in the green box to determine the level of risk. If the score falls in the white area, there is no or low risk, while scores in the gray area should be monitored closely, and scores in the black area indicate that the child should be referred. Summaries of free response items can also be transferred to this page, shown here highlighted in the blue box. Scoring can usually be completed in one to three minutes. The final step of the screening process is to share the results of the screen with the family and discuss next steps. As I just mentioned, no or low risk indicates a negative screen. Monitor indicates a borderline screen that, as the name suggests, should continue to be monitored. Providers should discuss areas of concern with caregivers and provide resources or referrals as necessary, and plan to rescreen the child at the next visit. Finally, refer indicates a positive screen and should be followed up with discussion around areas of concern, relevant resources and referrals, as well as a follow-up plan. Regardless of the screening results, it is important to remind caregivers that the result of the screen should not be taken as a diagnosis, merely an indication of risk. Regardless of the outcome of the screen, sharing screening results presents a wonderful opportunity to engage parents in developmental monitoring and promotion. Vroom is an app created by the Bezos Foundation that provides daily age-appropriate brain-building activities for parents to do with their children. The CDC also created the Milestone Tracker app as part of their Learn the Signs Act Early program. The app helps parents monitor their child's development by providing checklists of developmental milestones that parents can fill out at their convenience, with pictures and videos of children demonstrating each milestone, and tips and activities to promote healthy development from birth to age 5. Both apps are completely free and are available on both Apple and Android. One of the tools included in the ASQ SE2 Starter Kit is the Child Monitoring Sheet. While screening results should always be recorded in a patient's chart in the clinic's EMR system, this tool can be used in addition to help providers track screening results over time. This feature can be particularly useful for children who score in the middle monitor range who may need to be rescreened more often. Now that we've gone over the basics of the ASQ SC2, it's important to discuss the process of implementing this and any other tool into your practice workflow. Our team at the Bureau of Family Health can provide technical assistance to any practice interested in implementing a developmental screening system. The extent and focus of our assistance is entirely up to you. We know that each practice and the communities they serve are different, and our goal is to help you create a sustainable system that works for you. Our TA request form is the first step of our collaboration. We collect information on your clinic and staff so that we can better understand how to tailor our assistance to your needs. The back of the sheet lists the types of trainings we offer and different activities we can assist with. This form can be found on our website at ldh.la.gov forward slash CSHS. One of the primary tools we encourage providers to take advantage of is our screening implementation worksheet. The worksheet prompts you to plan for five different areas. Materials, completing the screening forms, scoring the screening forms, documenting the screening results, and patient discussion and follow-up. Many of the questions around implementation of screening programs are questions of who will be responsible for each step, which is why we ask about clinic staff composition on the TA request form. There are roles for clinical as well as administrative staff. Implementing standardized screening works best when the entire team is aware of the initiative and the various roles are clearly established. Our main take-home message is slow down to speed up. While it might seem like planning and pre-work is an extra step that you don't have time for, you really can't afford not to do it. Trying to implement developmental screening without a plan can result in confusion, extra work, missed opportunities, and frustration. Another useful tool for implementing developmental screening is process mapping. Process mapping involves the creation of a visual aid for picturing work processes that shows how inputs, outputs, and tasks are linked. 
While this activity was originally designed for quality improvement for existing processes, it can also be used to think through a new process as well. Once a process is chosen, the group should map out the way the work is currently being done, or if this is a new process, map out how you envision it going. Next, identify gaps and problem areas. What's preventing the process from running smoothly? Are the responsibilities assigned in a way that makes sense? Does the workflow fit with the time and space we have? Here we're going to walk through a pared down version of what the mapping process might look like in a given practice. These five steps are the basics of the screening flow through a primary care clinic, and these steps might be a good place to start mapping. First, the screen is administered to parents or caregivers, then scored, then the results are shared with the parents, referrals are recommended, after which patients should be followed up with, particularly in the case of a positive screen. However, making this process fit with the flow of your specific practice requires figuring out many more details, and post-its are a great way to keep track of steps, gaps, problem areas, and solutions. For instance, one question that should come up in the mapping process is where does it make sense to have parents fill out screening questionnaires? Have your team brainstorm ideas for where this makes sense, and put the options around the question. Are there spaces where parents are already waiting around for at least 10 minutes? It may be that your practice has few exam rooms and a crowded hallway, in which case the waiting room may be a good location for this part of the process. Another question to consider is at what stage is it feasible to enter screen results into the EHR? Again, turn this question to the team to brainstorm. It may be easiest to do this as soon as the questionnaire is scored or as part of the exam room check-in. Alternatively, it may work better for the primary care provider to input the score while they're reviewing the screen results. Or it may be easiest to do this in batches, perhaps at lunch and at the end of the day. In making your decision, it may be helpful to consider who will already be accessing the EHR after the questionnaire is scored. Finally, it's important to think about who can be your resource and referral expert. This doesn't have to be somebody with specialized training. Having ready access to resources for families on early intervention programs and family support organizations will make the checkout process go smoothly and help ensure that families are linked to services to address identified delays or risks. Remember, implementing a developmental screening program is a new workflow for the clinic and will require a bit of trial and error. Don't worry if it doesn't work perfectly the first run through. Look at the roadblocks, explore options, make changes, and retest the process until the kinks are worked through. Take advantage of our checklist and implementation tools to make this part easier. The ASQ SE2 Starter Kit has a one-time fee of $275, from which each of the questionnaires can be printed and copied indefinitely. Purchasing the kit also includes access to several online resources, including child monitoring sheets, an age interval calculator, and parent resources. The Louisiana Developmental Screening Guidelines Social Emotional Screening Tip Sheets hosts a list of appropriate referrals and resources for both positive and negative screens. This can be found in the resource catalog for each region or online at the link provided here. Thank you for your time and interest in the Louisiana Developmental Screening Guidelines. For more information about the ASQ SE2, the screening guidelines, or resources and referrals, visit our website shown here or contact our Developmental Screening Coordinator with questions. Thanks again for serving the children and families of Louisiana.